Good evening, James. Thank you very much for the opportunity to interview. William, thank you for inviting me. Uh, why, who, who are you as a person? And why are you seeking for this position? Okay, gracious me. So um, I'm a former military officer, so I've served my country. I'm a city of York councillor, so I serve my community. I'm also a husband uh, and a father and a brother. Um, voting for me is a vote for common sense. I always try and affect change in everything I do for the best possible outcome. So I'm standing for this. This is the next logical step for me in a quasi-political career. You know, I'm not one of those people who can stand back and accept the status quo. You know, it's challenge, challenge, challenge. Why, why, why? Why cannot we be better? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? And a friend of mine said to me, look, look, if you feel like that, why don't you run for the PFCC so you can challenge it? Uh, and that's why I'm doing it. Thank you. The lack of visible policing is causing alarm among the community. There are concerns about how North Yorkshire policies, preventive response and investigative team will keep York safe. Yeah. One, of, one of your priorities you emphasized is visible policing. What steps would you take to guarantee that we get our fair share of officers and what will you do with them once we get them? So to me, this is about making sure we've got the right people equipped in the right place to do the right tasks. So in the good old days, people say, well, you know, if you're not seeing a police officer, it's because crime's low. Well, that's not really where they want to be. People feel reassured if they feel safe. You know, one of my big mantras is let's work smarter, not harder. So one of the things I, I will be doing is sitting down with the chief constable and saying, right, who have we got where and why? And asking those awkward questions. And let's work in partnership with our local communities. So the York Street Angels, the Street Rangers, the PCSOs. What else can we do to put more people on the street? And it's not more CCTV. People actually want to see individuals, individuals in uniform so they feel protected, they're comfortable at night, women and, and girls can go out lawfully, peacefully, and enjoy a great night out without worrying, you know, are they gonna be attacked on the way home? So to me, it's let's look at what we've got and let's make it better. You know, we are a very, very large county uh, and we've got a small number of police officers. You know, the Conservative government have cut and cut and cut, they're now realizing it, so we're giving us police officers back, but people are still retiring, still people are leaving. It's easier to retain than it is to recruit. So let's look at why these people are leaving and let's work, you know, is it shift patterns? Is it job location? What could we be to retain this wealth of experience that these, you know, these great police officers have? Thank you. One could argue that local residents are dissatisfied with police response. And if they don't receive the assistance when they are most in need, there is a major issue to address. What are your plans to improve the police response to crime? So one of my big, big bugbears is the non-emergency phone number, the 101 number. And I've used it a number of times. You know, how can it be easier for me to phone my bank or phone the grocery store that I've ordered my shopping from than it is to get through to the police? There's got to be technology out there that we can respond better. And it comes back to smarter, not harder. Could we get a PCSO to that location more quickly than we can get a police officer? Could we get one of the street rangers there to assist more quickly, knowing the police backups on the way? But it comes back to the first point. If we've got more visible police officers, we can deter crime. If we can deter crime, people are more responsive, they feel safer. Thank you. You stated that one of your top priorities is to address the root cause of crime and that you will collaborate with various agencies to provide the assistance and support they require in order to build better lives free of crime. What are your plans for accomplishing this? So what I want to tackle the causes of crime, it's working with youth groups, 
community groups, social services, you know, the health sector, mental health, drug and alcohol services, uh, the police force uh, and the ambulance services who are always there to sort of pick up the pieces you know, when it goes horribly, horribly wrong. And they all do superb jobs, but sometimes they can work in stovepipes. What I want to do is create a task force, for want of a better expression, that will bring everyone together. And then we can map with clever intelligence where the seats of the crime are, where the crimes are taking place. And let's analyze why those crimes are taking place. And then let's start doing something about it. Now, it could be, you know, let's just say kids in a park enjoying you know, their time out and then, you know, alcohol gets involved, drugs gets involved. Well, why is that? So let's track that back and actually, you know, send a police officer, PCSO, you know, wandering over. Come on, guys, let's have a kick around. You know, let's bring back the youth groups. Let's give them something different to do. Let's channel that great energy that we all know young people have got in the right direction. Are you planning to enhance or modify the existing community fund, community safety service fund, or and, and project drop safety fund? So yeah, those are all key things. Um, let's, let's keep crime down at the lowest level. Uh, and there are priorities, um, but there's only there's only one pot of money, um, and I haven't got the books in front of me, and I've got to make sure that we, the taxpayer, North Yorkshire, gets the gets the very best value for money that it can possibly do. Now we may be looking at that community fund, thinking, well, actually, they're doing a brilliant job. I wonder if they could do much more if we give them another, you know, x thousands of pounds, or you know, actually, let's let's look at what they are doing and can we work it a better way. So, yeah, I'm sorry, that's a bit of a political answer. Um, until I see what they're doing with the, with the money they've got, I can't comment. Um, I, I wish there was a bottomless pit. I wish we could fund everything we wanted to. But, you know, you can't afford a Porsche if you've only got Skoda, Skoda pennies. Um, so, yeah, it's difficult decisions. And that's why, you know, voting for me, I've said for me, it's a vote for common sense, because I'm quite happy to ask those awkward questions of why, 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 why you know the five whys and eventually you, you get to the truth um so in a nutshell yes if i can uh, but i'd need to review it carefully thank you the pfcc has a statutory duty and mandate to hold the police accountable on behalf of the public it is also yep. the responsibility of the pfcc holding the chief constable accountable for the officers and the staff's performance and assuring the chief constable properly performs their duties and those personnel under their direction and control and that an efficient and ef effective police force is maintained. It is critical to scrutinize, support, challenge the force's performance. The question, what steps will you take to improve the current level of scrutiny so you know, i've been fortunate enough to meet the chief constable on, on a number of occasions i think she's a lovely lady and certainly the sort of person i can work with um, not for we need to remember that it's not working for the chief constable; it's working with them um, so i'm quite happy you know being a robust character and come from the military to ask those awkward questions and it comes back to the five whys if you ask it five times you'll eventually get why but also you know as the police say you know ABC, assume nothing, believe no one, check everything. Well, that, that works for me too. So I'll be asking the whys. Uh, and remember, it's all about working smarter, not harder. You know, I want everyone to go home at the end of their shift, police and fire, safe. So we've got to make sure they're kitted and looked after properly because they've got families just like you and I have. Thank you. The, the public faith in police has never been lower. At the moment, women and girls are feeling unsafe. Hate crime is on the rise in York, raising concern about ethnic and other minorities. What are you going to do to help them? So you're absolutely right. Restoring trust in the police force has got to be everyone's priority. I know it's certainly, certainly top of mind. But it's not just getting out and talking to the groups, the victims groups, the victims themselves. It's also listening to them. 
And what's great about having a female chief constable and female police officers is they have their own ideas of what makes them feel safe when they come home or when they go out. So let's start talking to them. South Yorkshire Constabulary have got some great ideas. Uh, let's look at what else is out there and see what other ideas we can work. You know, I'm not looking to reinvent the wheel on this. Let's just make it smarter. Let's make it work better. These people have the great ideas and all credit to them. Um, and I don't know all the answers. But if I know what makes a lady feel safe when she goes out at night, we can stay, take those steps to make sure she gets home safely at the end of that night. You know, there's a great scheme, Ask Angela. Um, I don't know if everyone's aware about it, but it's one of those, if you feel threatened, intimidated, or just not sure, you can ask a member of the bar staff, one of the door staff, you know, is Angela working tonight? And that's the code word to say, you know, this person needs just that little bit more care and attention. So yeah, just sit over there and, you know, in a quiet moment, they slip out the back door or get a taxi or someone can keep an eye on them. Um, it's a brilliant, brilliant system. Let's just make sure more people know about it. Uh, so as usual, uh, I'll ask you the question, say to, to, every, to the people who will vote on the 25th, uh, what would you say why they should vote you in 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 one sentence or in a few, few sentences okay, um, having served my country having served served my community i understand what it is to be in public office you know i, I put that before my own life private life um, and sometimes to the detriment of my own family who will sometimes have to take second place but they understand that Voting for me is voting for common sense. I'm not you know, a totally political through and through die in the wall liberal Democrat, and even they know that. What I do do is give a reassuring uh, presence uh, and an ability to ask the awkward questions, not once, not twice, but keep on asking them and deliver on my promises. Because I've only been I'll only be elected for a number of years. And if I'm not good enough, I won't be re-elected. So I'll leave the people to judge how well I've done. Um, but like I say, voting for me is a vote for common sense. Thank you very much for your time, Jim. Well, it's, it's been a pleasure. How long did it take you to sort, to, to sort all this out and host it? Because this is just brilliant. <laughs>